Before we get started with today's podcast, I want to do a shout out to our sponsor, Bombas. Bombas makes getting active more comfortable with socks that support your sport, breathable t-shirts that keep you from absolutely overeating, and underwear made to move with you. So whether you're running, golfing, going to Pilates, going to a dance class, whatever it is that makes you move your body, you are going to feel good in their comfort innovations, soft and breathable materials, and your heart's going to feel good, okay? You're not just working out for heart health. You're buying Bombas because they give back. That's right. Socks, underwear, and t-shirts are the number one, two, and three most requested items in homeless shelters. And that's why with every comfy item you purchase, Bombas donates another comfy item to someone experiencing homelessness. There is a 100% happiness guarantee, which means you are covered for life and you can reach out any time for easy returns, exchanges, or replacements. But I guarantee you're not going to need them because honestly, they are the most comfortable socks I have ever put on my body. So go to bombas.com slash TMGW and use code TMGW for 20% off your first purchase. Bombas.com slash TMGW and code TMGW for 20% off off your first purchase. This might get weird. Are we rolling? We're rolling. Well, then cheers, Grace Helbig. Cheers, memory hot. Woot, woot, everybody. Uh, I am drinking a tiny, tiny... You're, sorry, your, what, bangs, bang? your bangs look like you were just headbanging before you started this podcast. Oh, I'm <laughs> telling you what. Okay, the, the bangs, the bangs. Yeah, how are I, the bangs? I'm liking, I'm liking the bangs. Yeah. The thing is, it's finding the right bang. And mm. and also, I kind of got scarred because last time I had bangs, yeah. I remember I was cutting them myself towards the end mm-hmm. and then also pandemic and whatnot. And then I remember the girl who cuts my hair being like, yeah, you. I can tell you've been cutting your own bangs, and me being like, she, she's very straightforward. I love her pieces, but she's she is Daria. It's it's, it's so tough because that is just fact. But yeah. why does it hurt so much? I know. I was like, why? Because I look like I have like like red toothbrush bristles, just like glued, just yeah. taped to my crown of my head. It was like, yeah, I get it. I'm doing. You that. know that you're you're the. The professional here. Yeah. I'm just trying. Right? I, I'm the problem. It's me. Um, do you remember that time? Side note. Hmm. Do you remember that time we went? I went to a, um, oh God, like a Lucha Vavum, like a Luchador burlesque show. And uh, I went to go get a drink. And this wonderful gay guy beside me just said, by the way, I know you probably hate them. I love your bangs. And I went, <laughs> who says that? Who says that to someone? I know you probably hate them, but I love your bangs. Uh, Ew, what does that mean? I know. That they look bad. Uh, I know. But you find them charming in a way. Right? Do I? Does this read regrets? So anyway, she was like, I can tell you've been cutting your own bangs. So I was like, okay, I'm going to be one of those people mm-hmm. that actually gets their bangs trimmed every couple of weeks mm, yeah so that's what i told myself no no i'm fucking not no no your, i'm not your bangs trimmed it's such an easy thing to make a whole yes. trip to a person or have a person make a whole trip to you it just feels like a yeah. lot it feels like going to the doctor to get a splinter out yeah it's, oh exactly or like or to um uh what is, what is the skin doctor called dermatologist to get a, a pimple popped yeah you know it's Ugh. just like i could do that in like two seconds though yeah so anyway i'm trimming my own bangs so i'm just finding my flow okay i'm not going too short um do you watch tutorials on how to cut them or do you just there is this one a, on vibe. youtube okay it's on this channel um it's grace <laughs> Oh, so I, your bangs uh, really do work for you, which is so funny because you. like I'm looking at the old like graphics that we have for our podcast and mm-hmm. it's just like two cartoons of you and I yes. and you have bangs. And I was thinking about that today. I'm like, oh, she's returned to restore the integrity of our uh, brand icons. Yeah, I had to do it. <laughs> but uh, over the weekend, my little brother sent me this photo that was from some weird his friend sent it to him that was like, did your sister uh, like license? Since her image for <gasps> this, uh, wait. Did you? He said, "Did you sell your likeness to a couples therapy course on handling newborn babies?" I'll post this on our Patreon. But that's whoa! It's, it's a, you with bangs. It's an image of a girl that looks exactly like me with brown hair and bangs. Uh, it, and it just reminded me that I do not need to return to the era of bangs or brunette or brunette. No, you are not built for brunette. No. I mean, like, and if you do, I know you have a lot of hair to shove into a wig cap, <laughs> yeah. but like we can just wig it. Mm-hmm. You know, I want, I wouldn't mind getting more into wigs this year if I'm being Ooh. quite honest. Why not? 
I have I, a little night out as a blonde. Why not? Uh, why not? That's what they're there for. I know. I've, I'm excited already to go shorter with my hair. Yeah. I feel like I was oh. very conservative on my first chop. And so now I'm already ready to go above the shoulders. Yeah. You are hard on the. It was a capital L in the lob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make sure that the front was longer than the back, and now we're ready to raise it all back up. Just don't care in it. That's a slippery. <laughs> it's a slippery, slippery soap slope to have that stacked hairdo. Um, I know. But so I, I, this is what I did. This is how we're making. This is growth. Okay. Is I'm cutting my own bangs again. Yes. However, when I was doing it before, I was doing it with like craft scissors. Yeah, like. <laughs> And now I bought a pair of, of bang cutting scissors nice. um, online uh, and like I have a little case for them so they like oh. stay sharp. Nice. You have appropriate accessories for the endeavor. Yeah. So I haven't learned from my mistakes, but I'm trying to, you know, it's like gr- getting grow. it's like getting a investing in a decent set of knives in the kitchen. I need to do that. So you bad. haven't done that. Grace, I'm shocked. Grace, we have a lot of growing up to do this year, maybe. <laughs> the thing is, is like uh, Chip has gotten us good knives before. I'm mm. bad at the upkeep. Oh, yeah. I don't I don't do shit with the knives. No. We have. And you know what's crazy is there's a farmer's market in my neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Every single Sunday, there is a knife sharpening station. Oh, that they'll do it for you. They'll do it for you. But mm. meanwhile, though, that makes me go, I don't like how many knives are at this farmer's market. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> I don't like sweet. how many normal people have knives in here. <laughs> There's a sweet environment. <laughs> and then just the soothing sounds of metal being sharpened in yeah, the corner. I was just like, no, thank you. Um, but no, I really, that is, I have everything your kitchen could possibly want. Yeah. But dull blades. Dull blades. Dull blades. Mm, but you got some good scissors now. Thank you. Good job. So anyway, I'm I'm getting used to them. We're figuring, we're still figuring out the bangs. They're, they're looking great. They're Thank looking you. great. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, how how are you, ma'am? I'm good. I'm I think I'm good. I've been oh. feeling a little like off the last couple of days. I think it might be this full moon situation. When that's is going it on? when okay. today as we're recording this on March seventh. Well, we know it's a full moon because mm-hmm. our friend Hazel yes. is visiting the States from England and staying with another friend of ours. Yes. Anna Kana, aka the girl whose tooth I rip out in Dirty Thirty. In a fictional film. In a fictional film. <laughs> in a fictional film. <laughs> but what they are amazing at is planning group activities yeah. like admirable one of them is they had a full moon ceremony they're having another yeah but they throw you on a 30 person group thread Bold. where you know no one else i have you and then it's just a series of numbers this text thread goes faster than my twitter feed <laughs> And it's also, it is like that um, double dutch where you don't know how to jump in when so many people are responding and you're assuming that everyone else knows who everyone else is. So I don't know what the vibe is. I don't know either. Grace and I are on multiple text threads where we don't know anyone else. And then I get each other and we're like, do we even need... Do we decline or right, what's the etiquette? They're here? already doing callback jokes. I know. And I am. A, I'm like, OK, now is my silence seen as like arrogance? What do I do here? How do I how do I uh, and, jovially uh, mm-hmm. let them know that I can't be there? And I also want to let them know whose number this is. But I don't even know who but I'm I'd, letting know. There's no and I don't want to be like, oh, this is Mamrie's number. And little do I know someone on that thread doesn't like me. <laughs> And they're like, oh, now we really got her. Let's do some pranks. But anyway, we are on a thread for another full moon night. And you got it. I feel like you got in there good today. I got in good today. You said something like Saturn in Pisces. So that's what I wanted to mention. So not only. There's a long route to be like, so you know what's happening. (laughs) <laughs> Not really. I know how to copy and paste what I've seen happen online okay. uh, to people that seem to know about those things. The Saturn in Pisces. So we got full moon in Virgo and Saturn oh. in Pisces is the big astrological event that's paired with this right now, um, because this is the first time that Saturn has moved into Pisces in 30 years. Wow. Yeah. So the last time this happened, we were young, uh, aspirational children thinking that we were probably teenagers before this is before we even knew what tiktok was we were just literally trying to learn like in sync dances in our room oh my god wait hold on though yeah when you say saturn is in pisces Mm -hmm. i know saturn is the planet 
Yeah. Where the hell is Pisces? Pisces is a sign. So Saturn. Okay, let me explain. <laughs> it's this is what's so crazy. I love reading about astrology, but it does make me feel like the gif of all of the math equations yeah. over what's her face. I'm just Steve Brule. Just confused in multiple directions. <laughs> and this is when I was trying to like read books on astrology and teach myself. It's like learning another language. Like it's so many different things to remember and like the houses and the signs and the phases, all these things. But mm. um, Aliza Kelly, I love her so much. She's an incredible astrologist, just like cool chick online. She wrote an article for The Cut um, that I was reading this morning. Oh. And also she's just great to follow on TikTok and Instagram because she breaks down astrological happenings like super funny and easy to understand and makes it just like very um very understandable. Digestible. Yeah. Does she throw asparagus? Uh no she I'm doesn't. Out. But she does an amazing <laughs> cat eye black eyeliner that oh. I cannot stop just admiring. I put on cat eyes before you got here. They and then great. I no and then I like laid down yeah you know i did one your hand. What, I, did, I did a potato stamp on my own <laughs> yeah. i thought about some eyeliner today and now i just i haven't i barely wear a ton of makeup so every time i put eyeliner on i like look at myself in the mirror being like what are you who are you trying to be today you used to go full uh, wine house i used to be brunette with bangs and full full cat eyes not in this pisces moon no okay so this is okay so saturn represents rules responsibility maturation um it's very like kind of boundaries hard work um are like saturn's favorite things but it's moving into pisces the astrological sign so pisces is like sensitive um it's like emotions psychic influence it's like very about spirituality pisces speaks in like poetry and okay. it dissolves boundaries um it's like very rose colored glasses this is all from her article on the cut mm -hmm. um and saturn is all about like reality checks so saturn's going to be adopting these qualities of the zodiac sign and it's going to make everything feel a little bit odd because these I, are two like opposing kind of energy forces. Oh man, I was but, hoping it was going to no, make us awesome. It, 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 okay. It's just going to make so me gotta, have more anxiety. No, it's going to be great, especially as a Virgo right now, because okay. full moon oh. in Virgo and all that stuff. So Saturn return is a cosmic coming of age. So it's an important milestone where you define your wants, your needs and expectations. Um, your first Saturn return, which is what we had 30 years ago, is it helps you step into your adulthood. Your second Saturn return uh, will elevate your greater mission, and your third will invite you to cultivate a powerful legacy. But Whoa! These are all these are all happening on my year of like tens. Yeah. Okay. So this is significant. So this says during any Saturn return, you'll discover that anything that no longer serves you, whether it's shitty jobs, friendships, relationships, uh, will fall by the wayside, which is fantastic. But it can also be challenging and a little destabilizing as everything's happening. That's why it's going to be kind of weird energy. Okay. But remember that it's totally fine, says Aliza. On the other side of your Saturn return, you'll be in alignment with your soul's mission. Okay. So right the ride all right yeah i just would like one moon hi larry i would like one moon to like just be chill i feel like yeah. every single time you update me on this i'm still confused on pisces is pisces a position in the in the universe what what is it moving into saturn is move saturn the planet is moving into pisces the sign it's all I know, based but where on, is the sign it's all on astrological <laughs> charts it's based on I how saw we, the sign it's it's how we look <laughs> astronomers see what's going on up okay there. so there's a little area called pisces yeah so oh that i needed to know was it age six location i think because <laughs> you're like your star charts like the all the planets the way you read like your star chart is that yeah. all the planets were in these certain positions on the exact time Got and it. day that you were born I, and so that's why everyone's star chart is completely unique to themselves got it okay i now now it kind of makes sense to me it's, but i feel like every every moon or whatever it's just like you're gonna get rid of stuff you don't want it's yep. not gonna serve you and then you're gonna feel better and creative well, and i'm like can i just can i get one that's <laughs> like you should just chill bitch well, and this, do nothing well um that's i think what happens in between all oh, this okay stuff. okay but i was reading something for virgo signs uh earlier because you're like one of the only people who i remember um exactly in, in general <laughs> you are yeah that i remember in general we see each other but uh yeah the full moon um 
is helping you. Wait, let me find. Oh, give, tell mama something good on this one, baby. I know. There's okay. So not only do we have the full moon in Virgo, Saturn, uh, planet of challenges, rewards, moved into Pisces since the nineties. Okay, so mutable signs. That's what you are, Virgo. I'm mutable. Yeah. Said everyone listening to this podcast. <laughs> Thank God, because she never shuts the fuck up. It says you are. This is according to this everything aligns uh, thing that I follow on Instagram. Okay. You are officially in the spotlight. If you haven't already started, it's definitely time to get your life together. Yesterday. <laughs> yeah. No shit. No shit. <laughs> So today's full moon in Virgo challenges us to find balance between the material and physical world and the spiritual world. The full moon being challenged by both Mars, blah, blah, blah. Some stuff I'm not super into. Yeah, see. So it's like you have been trying to find answers to where you want to go in life and think about what new course of action you want to take. But there's a feeling of elusiveness and a feeling loss that many of you might feel. This is because you're look what you're looking for is more spiritual than it is literal. Ah, boo. <laughs> <It's> like- <laughs> Mutable. I'm going to do zero (laughs) self-reflection. Tell me how to make money. (laughs) That's what I took from that little Virgo. Well, thank you for telling me. And I'm not I'm not pooing on it at all. I think it's super fun. I just I'm always just kind of like. These sounds like Similar. the same song. Yeah. This out. This is like a Taylor Swift album. Yeah, where it's every song's talking about the same thing. Boy did something bad, but boy am I over it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like horoscopes to me are every folklore. Yeah, era album. It does. I find it very interesting, but I get very flooded when I read about it because like it's, like horny. Uh, <laughs> You could say, I the guess, in two flooded. sets. The basement floods, the upstairs just uh, fills with bone. water. <laughs> the, yeah, my brain just sort of sloshes around because it does, even as much as I'm trying to like learn it and retain what all these different things are, I still get so confused so yeah. quickly on all of it. But oh, basically, it. full moon, just manifest some new stuff. Okay. I mean, I feel like I do that. I do that every new morning there you go there you go so i'll be spiritual and shit <laughs> you see you are connecting to your spiritual side using the internet without express vpn is like leaving your laptop exposed at the coffee shop table while you run to the bathroom most of the time you're probably fine but what if one day you come out of the bathroom and your laptop is gone Uh oh every time you connect to an unencrypted network cafes, hotels, airports, any hacker on the same network can gain access to your personal data, passwords, financial details, etc. It doesn't take much technical knowledge to hack someone, just some cheap hardware is all you need and, you know, a smart 12-year-old could do it. Your data is valuable. Hackers can make up to $1,000 per person selling personal info on the dark web. So why use ExpressVPN? Because it creates a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet. Hackers can't steal your sensitive data. It's super secure. It would take a hacker with a supercomputer over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. And it's super easy to use. You fire up the app, you click one button, and you're protected. And it works on all devices, phones, laptops, tablets, and more so you can stay secure on the go. I also love ExpressVPN because it allows me to connect to uh, international networks so I can watch all of my favorite British, sweet, lovely, uplifting competition shows like Great Pottery Throwdown before they come out in the States. Woohoo! So secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash TMGW. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash TMGW and you can get an extra three months free again expressvpn.com slash tmgw let's be honest most bras suck they really freaking suck by the end of the day i feel like i'm taking off like some chainmail armor or something it's a bummer luckily there is third love and they know that it's not you it's the bra that's why third love spent years designing bras for your body they make over 60 sizes and even invented half cups so you always get the perfect fit which means you always look and feel great because y'all boobs fluctuate all right and bras should accommodate that Sometimes they're a little pinchy or pokey or your straps slip or the cups gape and you spill out of them or they're too tight and you look like you're going to a renaissance fair or something. You do not need to be uncomfortable in your brassiere. With Third Love Bra, it's like wearing a 24-7 t-shirt bra that makes your boobs look amazing and makes you look better in your clothes, giving you a little more confidence. I absolutely love Third Love. Honestly, I was introduced to them by 
this uh, these ad reads we're doing you know we always like to try out the product before we do uh, before we put it on our podcast and I'm obsessed you guys my boobs feel like they are getting a hug a much needed hug third love's best selling bras are designed to fit and support your body they're gonna make you look and feel great in whatever you're wearing and the half cup sizes really give you the perfect fit not everyone is just a dead set A B C D you name it we, we do a little in between you're Bra size can change over six times throughout your life, and they make it easy to find your perfect size with their virtual fitting room. It's like a personal shopper, but better. It looks at size and breast shape, which I've never had in a bra before. Bra size and styles are all perfect for you, and they have helped over 20 million women find their perfect bra size. So never get stuck with a bad bra again. Returns and exchanges are free up to 60 days. So ditch the bad bra. Get a better one that makes you look and feel great. Upgrade your bra and get 20% off your first order at thirdlove.com slash TMGW. That's 20% off your first order today at thirdlove.com slash TMGW. Um, well, you know, it's not spiritual, but I did it this past weekend. What? Watch the first episode of Milf Manor. Wait, I thought you were already watching that. No, no. I guess we just talked about, did we talk about on the Discovery show that we did? I no, think? because, uh, I think it, I think it is Discovery. I'm not sure. Yeah. But we didn't like review it or anything, but I, you know, I might've brought it up because it was an actual joke on 30 Rock. Mm. Like as a fake show. And now it's a real show. And now it's a real show. And I was in Palm Springs with our friend Jacqueline. It's the best place to watch a new weird reality program. Well, the thing is, is we were like, we needed something to binge, right? And she wasn't caught up to my Love Island episode. I got to start Love Island. Yeah. We're too far in this one because Mm. it literally comes out like five times a week. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, it's in a real time. Oh, like Big Brother and all that? Yeah, exactly. So, like, people will enter Love Island when they're Uh like, a new bombshell has entered the Uh villa. Like, they've already been watching and, like, know who they're going to go for. Wow. Or will be like, oh, uh, I don't think your relationship's as strong as you think it is. And then you'll be like, are they just planting a seed or do they really think that? Oh, psychological warfare. I know. (laughs) So, anyway, but we were like despy yeah. right and we watched some of making uh no next in fashion have yes you seen that? yeah Which i haven't I love. watched the new season but yeah i have a couple more episodes of it but like there's only so much that's I a would... tan france and Gigi hadid right and they're trying to make Gigi hadid the comic relief oh you know they really wow. they pushed Heidi and her humor on us for yeah. so long. <laughs> yeah, now they're just trying to make every model hilarious. Totally. <laughs> Heidi and Tim, undeniable chemistry. I mean, yeah, they created the mold, but I don't know if it works for everyone else. No, I mean Heidi, worm for Halloween. Uh, we know the bitch is funny. She's just German, <laughs> and sometimes it doesn't read. She knows that she is the joke. So yes. she's I I love it. She leans in. Gigi, who says slay mama to every single <laughs> every single thing. Every judging is just like slay mama. You slayed. I mean slay all day, girl. Um billionaire's daughter. Yeah. Um but so anyway, we were like exhausted from that. I haven't seen the new F one, which I know you have, Jacqueline right. had. So we were like the fuck are we gonna watch yeah and i filled that girl full of gin drinks she never drinks liquor (laughs) and we were like let's watch milf man (laughs) it is time do you know the concept of the show wait um, i'm getting it confused with the show you told me you were watching about like three adult women that, oh that was groove hotel the, oh okay so that, that's the one i kept assuming was milf manor Groove okay. hotel so this is very similar except it's more like a love island or uh something like that where it's not just like one older woman is going mm-hmm. on dates with young guys. It's like eight older women and there's eight younger guys okay. uh, to see like who who's compatible with each other. Okay. So it's like eight guys who are who like older women. And, and they're all all these women are moms. Uh, Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. I okay. mean, yeah. So, I mean, they're all like I mean, there are some that are in their mid 40s that have been rode hard and put out wet (laughs) they've lived a lot of life they've lived a lot of life and (laughs) and never seen a smear of sunscreen okay you know what i mean where you're like okay this episode brought to you by leather Um, (laughs) yeah not dove (laughs) uh, so anyway i was like oh okay i get it i get it it's older ladies like vying for the attention of younger men on the first episode Uh they are every guy there (laughs) is one of their sons (gasps) 
No, that's too much. Already that's the too cons- much. The, that is a that's a that is a weird hook that should be introduced long into an established franchise. Uh huh. I because it's going to take a second for an audience to wrap their brain around already the mm-hmm. kind of like accepting this jarring nature of watching people from two different age uh-huh. brackets and like celebrating the fact that they're milfs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, the name in general. So every person there mm-hmm. is one of the female contestants son. So the moms yeah. are watching their sons hook up with. Yep. Technically their peers. So this is what's so crazy. I mean, all of it. Wow. They have really, it's crazy. But so, and the weird, and the weirdest part is when you watch it, you want to be like, once they realize what's up, once yeah. they like drop the thing and everyone's like, Ooh, let's see these hot guys. Like they yeah. see their outlines and the guys are like, Ooh, I'm ready to see some God. fine edge wine. You know, like <laughs> see, <laughs> the forever oh, used cringy. analogy, it drops and it's like, Derek, huh? Oh my God. There are sons. You know what I mean? Oh. And but the thing is, is like, you know, they knew beforehand and they agreed to this because there's right. no way that oh, eight yeah. mothers told eight of their sons, I'm going on a reality show to find love. And they all went, I am too. Right. And they didn't share the concept and they all went to Mexico. True. Yeah. So they'd be like, one of them said, I was like, they've got to say something. And one of the moms was like, I knew he was going on a reality show, but I had no idea it was the same one as me. And I'm like, that's bullshit. That's a lie. Yeah. You agreed to do this. Yeah. And it's so awkward, Grace. Like the first challenge is literally get blindfolded and touch these guys' chests no. and see if you can choose, pick out which one's your son. No! Yes. They have to, they have to actively touch chests and see if they can figure out which, which one's, one's their son. What that's are the they? the first this is episode. so uncomfortable. It's an already like uh-huh. uh, salacious, like a seeming idea. Why are we putting hats on hats on hats on hats? I know. <laughs> and so, and here is now where I'll remember because I had several drinks. I watched two episodes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you can't. I mean, that one. I don't. I wonder if they're doing themselves uh, any service by doing that so quickly. That feels like. It's a lot. We'll see. I think what's going to happen is it's going to be a lot of, and I'm sorry for anyone who didn't want spoilers on the first episode of Milk Fair. <laughs> it's been out for a bit. I don't know if anyone's holding that show to such a sacred no. level. <laughs> I mean, it, Chip is listening to this and texting me we're breaking up upon <laughs> learning this news. <laughs> but I think it's going to be a lot of like, you know, uh, you know, there's the couple, there's the saucy ones who's like, I get what I want kind of, kind of gals. And they're always from Orange County. (laughs) But, um, but there's going to be a lot of like, she's not good enough for my son. Yeah. Yeah. You keep your hands away. You stay away from my son. The dynamics are so complicated. It's fucking strange. Yeah. 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 Are they all living in the same house together? So what they do is like, uh, well, I've only seen the first episode. It's like the mom and sons like share a suite. That's so weird. I, That's so weird. That's I so weird. know so because weird. there's like, like the son like brought like a lady back and the mom was like, don't even think about it. <laughs> That's so Isn't it straight? <laughs> like I knew this was going to be a, a trash show. Yeah. But, but when we realized it was that we were like, this is, I think we've hit rock bottom. Yeah, yeah. Like unless we start watching a show that's called like, uh, you know, like, I really love to inbreed. <laughs> like, like, I'm about to meet 10 of my it's cousins. Just, it's just to called see cousins. What, it's called kissing cousins. Like, unless oh. we get there, I was like, oh, this is, this is the worst. Yeah, this feels like if The Onion created a reality program. Well, that's what I'm saying. It is a joke yeah. on 30 Rock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so wild. I mean, oh. it makes, uh, granted, I loved it, but it just makes the concept of Fuckboy Island feel like succession. You know, like yeah. the highest caliber of TV. Uh, right? I know. Because there's something like, the idea of just like a bunch of moms wanting to get back out there. That was and, Groove Hotel. Uh, yeah. See, that concept alone is like interesting enough. Mm-hmm. We don't need to add all of the bizarro family dynamics so weird so weird and every mom just has like it's it's just a vibe oh oh i don't know if i could do it uh well maybe we that's appropriate to bring up the other salacious reality oh shit television bombshell that happened over the weekend i posted on instagram to ask what we should be talking about and many 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 people wanted to 
uh, bring up the Vanderpump Rules. Scandaval. <laughs> the Scandaval. Well, I know just for y'all listening, if you've ever thought about joining Patreon, yeah. Grace and I are going to do a bonus podcast this week that's only about reality TV. So yep. consider this an amuse bouche. Yes. We don't want to overwhelm you too much with that kind of conversation here, but Help. it is something we indulge in, obviously, in our real lives. We love it. <laughs> All I'm going to say is it was very tough to get the largest reality TV bombshell i've had in a long time <laughs> and be with someone who doesn't watch it oh me and you were te- we we're firing texts back and forth I memes know. memes text news at Le- like 7 a.m yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like i was like memory's on this if she is in the morning texting me from palm springs yeah and then i was like oh it's too much cut to i spent hours <laughs> hours <laughs> online looking through things you just fall into the wormhole mm-hmm. and I think the crazy, well, so I don't know. You guys know that uh, if you watch Vanderpump Rules, Tom Sandoval was uh, caught having an affair with uh, co-star Raquel. Uh, Seven month long affair, cheating on his girlfriend of nine years. Of nine years. And she found out apparently uh, on his phone while in the middle of a show that he was doing in Los Angeles that she was there like attending and uh, left right after. And then they've broken up. We got Andy and the camera on the case because Bravo is filming in real time as it unfolds. And it just blew up over the weekend. And it's a kind of a one of those testaments where you realize like, oh, such a big part of this show is the social media aspect of it. Mm-hmm. That all of these people are the exact demo of, you know, millennial Gen Z social media users. So they're revealing more information all across like this social media universe that's adding to the tv show you're watching like a show yes without watching the show yeah absolutely a, a show within a show i mean this is uh, our this next generation's brad and angelina <laughs> i mean it, i mean this is the scandal that racked all scandals two things it's just so dumb it's so dumb uh, like besides ours besides our two yeah. Besides the Morgan boys, men are trash. Yes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and I, I like my dad and my brothers. Uh, but other than that. <laughs> nope. Blanketed statement. Besides the Morgan boys, men are trash. Um, no, but two things. One, I've been to a very intimate brunch with Ariana. Yeah. My okay. friend uh, Lindsay mm-hmm. and her are friends and sh- and Lindsay's a great cook. And so she'll occasionally do like a girls brunch thing. This is I mean, this is pre pandemic. Yeah. There's maybe like six of us yeah and i had that weird thing where i had to pretend i didn't watch vanderpump you know like <laughs> yeah. i should have just been like by the way you know everyone else in this room but me i love the show yeah. but like that's the interesting thing about when you watch a reality show and mm-hmm. then you're faced with meeting someone on that show it's like someone meeting us and being like i guess a little yeah. bit of being like i know i need, stuff to, about I need you. to tell you like i've yeah, I've watched your shit for 10 years, so I kind of know. It. Well, it's also like we're the same age as her, too. So yeah. it does. I don't know why it feels a little like creepy yeah. or like a little less or a little awkward. It's just not creepy to, at all. She goes no, on TV. You know I, what I mean? I love reality TV. I know. And I'm pretty vocal about it, but it still is met with like a bit of like, oh, does that make me a weirdo? <laughs> right. Well, you go like, how much am I supposed to say? How much? You know, when she was like, I'm Ariana, I would want to be like, yeah, no shit. And then I like turn into a slow mo of like holding a drink, like <laughs> just yeah. having it spill in slow motion. No kidding. I know everything about your life that you put on television, but she was so nice. So it only yeah, solidifies my cool. team, Ariana, uh-huh. even more. And the fact that like her friends, our mutual friends are like very cool, fun, like chill girls. Yeah. And two, I was in Palm Springs this weekend when mm-hmm. I went down and I was so mad yeah. because, you know, all I did was complete, I, you know, my search right now on my Instagram. Yeah. is just the cast of Vanderpump Rules oh, same. looking for clues you <laughs> same. know uh, I know and then I was like I gotta go on to my Finstagram because I don't I don't <laughs> I got to be sleuth about me watching all of their stories oh. right now. I was following all of Lala's stories oh, all weekend everything. long. No, but what what annoyed me is that I went on to one of them. Yeah. And they like Instagram like the exterior of a bar. Mm hmm two blocks up from me and i was like if uh, i had been home i'd have been like grace let's get a drink <laughs> <laughs> like, i know that edge of 
of a bar you know like yeah, no one just... else would sleuth it out and i'm like i know exactly where that is i walk past it all yeah. the time and we're just hiding behind plants yeah <laughs> the yeah it's just uh it's absolutely insane yes um we'll talk about it more on the on the bones we'll talk about it more the whole necklace situation of it all is so cringy and so absolutely absurd and stupid um so, and it's uh hyper fascinating it's rocked our worlds yeah um so yeah if you're thinking about doing the bonus pod stuff on patreon and you yeah. watch reality tv in oh especially because tonight lisa what? vanderpump is a solo guest on oh, watch, watch what, what happens, happens live. live and she and andy have already been tweeting about how many Shit. parts to the reunion should there be I know. and she said one because my heart can't take it grace and i we will have to get back <laughs> grace and i have uh plans after this to go hang out with uh our friends Rhett and link's wife the wives the, the wives. mythical wives. The wives that essay you definitely started weeks before the deadline and not the night before might be easier with some late night snacks doordash can help you get the snacks and energy drinks that you need right to your door to get you through that all-nighter Get the back-to-school savings you really want and get unlimited free DoorDash delivery with Dash Pass, just $4.99 a month for students. How worth it? So worth it. With $0 delivery fees, exclusive items, and more than 25,000 members-only offers nationwide, Dash Pass by DoorDash has everything you need to make this semester memorable. Dash Pass for students gets you delivery in an hour or less so you can satisfy those spur-of-the-moment cravings or save even more with 5% DoorDash credits back on pickup orders. Dash Pass for Students gives you access to more than just your favorite restaurants, saving you grocery runs, convenience store trips, and they even have your back with gift shopping. And you can save even more with an annual membership, less than $50 a year for unlimited $0 delivery fees. For a limited time, you listeners can get 50% off up to a $20 value and $0 delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app app and enter code TMGW2023. That's 50% off, 50% off up to a $20 value and $0 delivery fees when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code TMGW2023. Don't forget that's code TMGW2023 for 50% off up to a $20 value and $0 delivery fees with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Um, okay, I did do something last week, which yeah. was I went to see a friend's concert. Cool. My friend Ingrid Andrus. And I I am just so old. Yeah. Because I... <laughs> we both are, yeah. Because I went and I was like, okay, it starts at 8, so like she'll go on at like 8.30. And I got there and I was like, okay, 8.30. And then it was like the opener goes on at 9. <laughs> and then I was like... W- what i'd have been like can i zoom into this concert what? From well home? what's so crazy is i'm like people used to come watch my friends would come out to see like a midnight yeah. show yeah. of my shitty band yeah you know like in new york city yeah. and i'm like i can't even make it to nine anymore no, that's what i have in my notes that i love that uh jamie lee curtis that's i have that in my notes that was yeah. my follow-up that she didn't go to an academy award nominee dinner because it starts at 7 30 and she said quote <laughs> I'm not going because mama, mommy goes to bed early. And yep. I thought, snap, 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 yeah. snap. Jamie Lee Curtis has been killing me on the red carpet. She uh, like, she just says whatever she wants and she can say whatever she wants. Yeah, um, she's great. I love it because she is nominated for like so many awards for everything, yeah. everywhere, all at once. And she was like, I started in horror films. I've sold yogurt that makes you shit in commercials. <laughs> I've never expected to be nominated for a Golden Globe. She's made genuine cameos on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills this yes. past season. <laughs> I mean, speaking of crossover, but she was like, why can't we have, in that same interview, she's hmm. like, why can't we have just earlier concerts? She goes, you two play a matinee cold play <laughs> yeah. play in a matinee like and i was just like everyone she's listing they're like don't use our names <laughs> that just means you think we're like catering yeah. to a certain demo but it's true if i could go see like someone i really like mm-hmm. during the day that isn't at a festival uh, be great i'm in that'd be great yeah i saw some headline a couple weeks ago that there was like an adult club that closes at like midnight <gasps> so it's like you go you party you can leave at like 10 and still feel like you had the full like club experience and i, I was like that's do. i think where we're headed 
where I would love that. We just we get the same amount of fun in. We just start earlier. We end earlier. I would love that because you know I did a Hills rewatch. Yeah, and that was of the golden age where people were going to like hide. Yeah. and stuff. H Y D E. Yes, and like uh like low hands and stuff were going out, and they were like, "All right, well let's get ready to go," and then it would be like eleven thirty. We ho, and it'd be like, "No, no, 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 no." I would like to go dance at seven and it not be yep. weird. That would be fantastic. Have some drinks, have some food, mm-hmm. dance a little go home do my nighttime routine be in bed put my eye mask on have you been doing like a like a true well i know i've watched your tiktok yeah where it talks about how you sleep with so and all your accoutrements but do you do like a skin routine now i have been actively trying to wash my face every night that's, that's amazing that's my equivalent of you getting the right scissors for your bangs yep. is that I am no longer relying solely on the makeup wipe to do all the dirty work at the end of the night. I'm actually washing my face. I'm putting on a nighttime moisturizer. Whoa. I know big stuff. I'm putting on a nighttime lip uh, cream. Oh, right. The lip mask. Yeah. You, you talked about your lip mask. The lip mask. That's the one that I forget what the brand is, but it's the one that everyone's talking about on TikTok and Instagram. Oh, it's everywhere. Like a, oh, it's like a it's popular, a big it's a thing. trend. Yeah. I clicked on a, an article about like, these are TikTok products you're not going to want to miss. And it's honestly fantastic. Um, yeah. But now I look forward to a nighttime routine and like tucking myself into bed. You're cute. I'm getting it going. It feels great. But yeah, uh, even like going to see our friends tonight, I'm like, so we'll see them at I like know, 530. I'll be home by like 730, plenty of time to still get a little high, watch a little TV and then get to bed. <laughs> Literally, Grace walks in the door and I just go, they're both, they both have children. So like I'm thinking, like they yeah. were like, when we got to get, talk about when we get together, she was like, well, what time are you thinking? And I was like, honestly, if it opens at five, I'm good with that. Yeah, I'll wait outside at 445. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, ready? OK, just pressed against the window. <laughs> OK, this is a different this is a subject change. Yeah, but it's kind of critter cornery. It didn't happen to me. OK, but I just it, it has to do with critters in general. Got it. I love it. Have you ever heard about Japan's raccoon problem? Not that I can remember off now, the top of my head. I know you identify as part raccoon. Yes. A lot of times. And we also have an issue. They are out in Still? our... Yeah, they're out there. We found a pile of shit on our front lawn <laughs> the other day. <laughs> that did not belong to Goose. Because mm. uh, she can't get access. So it's either a coyote or a raccoon. I think it's a coyote. Well, I saw Elliot post a picture of a coyote from your front yard. Yeah, I thought you were going to say, I saw Elliot taking a shit on your front yard. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. Well, I happen to see. No, and there's... Now that it you is, mention it. I don't know what it is. dropping off a gift. I don't know he what was it, too. But there's something extraordinarily gross yeah. about picking up poop that it doesn't belong to your own dog. Honey, have, <laughs> honey, I, you know, this is really, this is gross, but there was a phase there where beans like to poop on poop. <laughs> oh, God. And like, like a bigger poop, like, like a poop, yeah. like, you know, those like, when yeah. you walk in the nature and you see people have like stacked stones. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> so, Goose loves to pee. She will pee on any rogue piece of poop she finds, even yeah. if she is like, has a drop of pee left in her. She oh, yeah. still has to make her mark, but she has not only by accident has she ever like shit on a pile of poop. And I've been like. Oh, yeah. No, crisis. There, there was a face there where Beans was <laughs> into it. And I'd be like, I'm going to throw up. If I, I'm going to throw up if I have to pick the, this whole thing. I'm like, oh, I can't. I can't touch it. I can't. I, yeah. I'm already like, I'm all yes to picking up my dog's poop. But when there's something else, it's just no. like a whole other world of. Oh, I can't. it's like a, putting your hand down a porta potty. I yeah. just don't want anything. Ugh. I don't want to be a part of it. I can't. Anyway, the I raccoons. Got, my Diet Coke is sitting right here. <laughs> uh, Diet Coke, courtesy of Grace Helbig. There we go. Because I needed some. I got a little sleepy time when I <laughs> potato stamped my uh, makeup. OK, but there was a, uh, a problem mm-hmm. in Japan with raccoons. And it was because of a children's book that oh. was a hit in the 70s. Okay. So here's what, well, we all love little raccoons. Yeah. You know, but right now they're like 
they're kind of a nuisance yeah. you know they'll as they are here they'll damage crops the japanese temples abundant poop etc and mm-hmm. it's because in 1977 there was a children's book uh with a cartoon r- raccoon named rascal okay it's a great okay. name for a raccoon fantastic it was called rascal uh Oh, no, it wasn't called that. <laughs> <laughs> this is like neither one of us should be doing any sort of presentations yeah. or any any book reports. <laughs> no. Oh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Never mind. No, but OK, but there was it was a book and it was very popular. And then they did like a 52 episode cartoon series about it. OK. And like everyone was obsessed with Rascal the Raccoon. OK. He was so cute to the point where people wanted them as pets. Right. Oh, because yeah. I think that I think the like the story of the book was that he did like live with a family and then had oh. to be released into the wild so everyone was okay. like you can have them as pets oh, what the boy. heck so th- so the japanese people loved it so much that soon the japanese were importing around 1500 <gasps> raccoons a month oh my god yes how are they how are these raccoons <laughs> I don't know. Imported. So anyway, they just like they kept bringing them in and uh-huh. soon they had to like absolutely ban it. So uh, they like you can still find descendants in Japan uh-huh. of the like rascal import phase. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That is. I mean, I do follow some raccoon accounts and uh, then <laughs> and occasionally. I know. I know. I know it's a funny sentence. It's a funny sentence. I know Instagram will suggest, you know, videos constantly yeah. in your feed. And there's always, it's always like every three videos is like a raccoon being bathed in someone's bathtub or something. And they're being really cute. Yeah. Or a raccoon just like taking little handfuls of like Skittles from someone. Always, always with the little beggar two, hands. Two little prayer hands. But can you imagine being like a pilot? In the seventies, and just being like, got another Car- fuck, got another fucking plane full of raccoons to bring to Tokyo. Raccoons, they are very cute, but they're yeah. also very vicious, uh, which is why we're like, ah, oh, they just climb up into these like bushes around our house, yeah. and so they're, uh, they're, it's a bummer, but they're all really cute too. I know it sucks. I mean, I haven't seen a randy outside in a minute yeah we got a lot of asks about any randy updates no and so but i'm curious because now we are entering our spring era Mm -hmm. and usually i mean we had like a couple randy random randies yeah uh like six months ago but usually it's the springtime that they're a little baby randy pops up so i'm really hoping i'm really hoping we get some possum action this year Okay, okay however not sure how that will play with the new dog with Larry. Yeah, that'll be very interesting. Like Beans doesn't even clock it. <laughs> Larry's going to be all up in the, the nest. Yeah. Larry's going to make them family or run them out of town. So we shall see what happens. But no, no critter updates. I mean, I told okay. Grace before we even got on the podcast that a hummingbird flew into our Palm Springs house this weekend. Mm-hmm. But it flew right back out. Didn't give me any grief. There you go. What's that mean? Yeah. <laughs> is that, that a thing? Mean? <laughs> tell, tell us what that means uh, it's, it's got its saturn and pisces energy that little <clears throat> saturn guy wow well guys don't forget we're gonna be posting our bonus pod later in the week so oh. if you have any interest in hearing more of our opinions about a wide array yeah. of reality tv we'll probably talk about drag race and stuff like that yes um and also we do lens day where we're just like go back and forth talking about our days because we don't really do that on instagram story so we do it over on patreon basically like a a set back and forth hi like hi john hi hank like back and forth on on uh patreon which is really fun and then also y'all we got a bar flies meeting this friday 4 p.m pacific standard time if uh it's all levels of patreon uh if you're thinking about joining and we read i have like 100 pages left of the book anxious people nice and it's great it's very entertaining nice yeah and i just announced the book that we're reading for march uh bad vibes only by Nora McInery that i love so much um and i haven't this book has been just sitting on my shelf for like months that she sent it to me and she's currently on her book tour for this book so i'm more than excited to finally sit down and read it you got don't i mean listen to all that amazing stuff that's happening on patreon yeah go uh uh, patreon.com slash this might get weird woo woo Oh man! Should I, we take a nap before I we have mean, to go I'm see like friends? Curi- I mean, like I need like three more thimbles of diet coke. Yeah. I've been, you know how hard I've had to like 
suppress my burps. <laughs> you, you know how I've job. been drinking still water? <laughs> You've done a great job. Still water. Okay, well, as per usual, this got weird. Yep. Yep.